In this video we're going to look at some of the more advanced settings of the RS150B. In particular, how to customise the look and feel of the unit, and more importantly, when looking at the actual sound settings and the inputs and outputs, how to change important options, which may not be immediately obvious. So first and foremost, under settings and display, you have here the options relating to the home screen itself. And you'll note across the top, there are certain apps that can be removed. As an example, if I'm never gonna use the CD player capabilities, I can remove the CD player and the CD ripper. And I can now apply those settings. But scrolling down, you'll see that these are now available to be re-added should I want to use them at a later date. You're also able to rearrange the icons in terms of what's important for you. So now going back to the home screen, you'll see a much reduced level of icons on here. Back under the actual display settings, you can now look at the icon themes. So by default, it comes as type A. And that's what this looks like here. Going back into the icon settings again. Type B. Type C, which is my preferred choice. Type D, which feels a little bit more like Apple. E. And last but not least, if we go down to F. So these are the themes that can be set from within the display settings itself. You also have HDMI resolution. So if you have actually have an HDMI service connected to here, you can set the resolution manually. This supports up to 4K, 60 frames per second. You also have access to what does your always on display look like? So as an example, turn this on now and selecting a particular theme means that as and when the actual unit is no longer in use, it will default back to this particular view. And last but not least, we have enlarge playback information. This is based on your viewing distance. If you're sat quite close, you can set this to be small. Default is the middle of the range and large simply increases the actual readback text. You also have a couple of options with respect to volume control. So controlling the volume with the actual side panel or through actually using your remote control, you can either have volume displayed on the left, sorry, apologies, on the right, or by setting to large in the center as a large number, perfect for when viewing at a distance. And again, you can set your default VU mode setting. So in here, I would prefer to have a white background analog. Set that to on and away we go. You also have in here access to your Wi-Fi settings, your ethernet settings, Bluetooth in terms of any paired devices, setting the date and time, and your user account should you wish to register a Hi-Fi Roads account. Back to the main menu, however, we also want to now look at the actual configuration as far as is this being used as a preamp or just as another digital source. We're pairing up right now with the Primair i35. So it makes no sense to have volume control on the rows and also on the Primair. So I want to change this to be a fixed audio output. When you're in the in and out settings, you get visibility of what's currently enabled and disabled. Here you'll see we're using the RS150 streamer in terms of the source. But if I was to select, say, for example, uh, EBU in, or selecting uh, perhaps ARC in, then this would go white, and the relative interface here would go to blue bronze. Over on the output side, turning this off turns off both the balanced and the unbalanced outputs. So you have to have the entire analog stage enabled at any given time. However, you may have noticed there's a small little settings icon. And in pressing this, you now have access to a number of different options, and this starts to become important. So with the pre-out level settings, we try to basically match the same level of output from the Primair CD35 
into the rows. And that meant that we had a consistent level of volume playing at any given point through the primer. What you need to do is, first and foremost, you have to select yourself an actual output. Here we're using 3,000 3, millivolts, unbalanced 1,000 millivolts, and then changing the slider to the pre-out level setting to be on. This means that the volume control is now removed completely from the rose itself. Be careful though, if you're ringing to a power amp, this is not advisable. It will be incredibly loud and could lead to damage of the speaker and your amplifier itself. You also have other options in here in such as phase inverting. So if you're using different speakers to, or if the crossover is somewhat different, or if you're using things like subwoofers, you may need to look at phase inversion. You also have options of PCM resampling rate, what DSD mode you want to be supporting, and the interpolation phase filter. So again, if you've got a particular preference in terms of which you prefer, personally, for us, it's the brick wall filter here. You can apply all these settings in the top right hand side, and once completed, the spinning wheel will stop. You'll be returned back to the main menu. Just to demonstrate now what this actually looks like, if I now try and use volume control, I get an error message basically stating the volume can only be adjusted from the device. It can not be adjusted from within the rows when pre-out is set to fixed. That is incredibly important. It's also worth noting that across the top here, you'll get different levels of information. This relates to what services are currently enabled. We can see here that Bluetooth as an icon is white. If I want to disable the device from broadcasting its Bluetooth beacon, we can simply press that, it takes you to the relevant menu and turn it off. Similarly, if I wanted to use something like DLNA, I can press this icon here and it will then bring up the ability to start the DLNA service. If there are messages relating to firmware or news and updates, the actual message icon here will flash. You can also set this to a sleep timer. So if it's getting late and you're worried about falling asleep in front of your hi-fi, as I do many, many times, you can set yourself a snooze. And in 30 minutes time, the unit itself will power off. It also tells you when a CD is present. If there's a CD present, here we're using the Hi-Fi Rose RSA780. I can then obviously eject the CD itself from within here. If I want to go through some of the CD ripping capabilities, I will need to re-enable the app to be displayed on the home screen itself. Hopefully this video has been useful for you. My name's Lee, we're from Yorkshire AV. We're a stockist and a retailer of the Rose RS150, the RS250, the RS201E and the Rose RSA780. If there's anything I can do to help you, please drop a like or a comment below and I'll happily get myself or my technical team to report back as soon as we possibly can. You can find us online at yorkshireav.co.uk. We're also forum subscribers and sponsors at AV Forums. We're also very present on there, discussing in great detail the benefits and some of the challenges that the Rose units can bring into a hi-fi system.